Americans are fighting to save our wetlands. Jillian Davies has the story. Check it out. Leave your comments. Ding the bell. Share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. A deep dive into some science here. I, I am really looking forward to this. The uh, Jillian T. Davies is with us, a professional wetland scientist, co-convener of the Universal Declaration for the Rights of Wetlands, president-elect of the Society of Wetlands Scientists Professional Certification Program, which is uh, wetlandcert.org. And uh, the Twitter handle is Wetland Scientists, it's S-C-I-E-N-T-I-S. And uh, Jillian, welcome, uh, welcome to the program. Let's, let's start by defining terms. What are wetlands and why should we care? <laughs> Thank you, Tom. The um, wet, wetlands are the transitional area between dry upland environments and, um, well, actually, the open ocean. Um, they include rivers, lakes, and the near shore area along a coast up to six meters in depth. They include marshes, bogs, fens, swamps. They can be forested or shrubby or have herbaceous matter. Um, yeah, and, and they do a tremendous amount of work for us for free. They um, clean and purify water. So if, if pollutants wash into them, the water coming out of the wetland will be a lot cleaner. Um, they store floodwaters, and they hold that floodwater like a, a sponge and then gradually release it during drier times so they support water supply. They also have more biodiversity, more wildlife species, plant species than, than most environments. And critically right now, they store a tremendous amount of carbon and they pull it out of the atmosphere and put it into plant material and the plant material decomposes into the soil and because the soil is so wet it takes a long time to decompose and the carbon just accumulates over thousands of years and wetlands only cover five to eight percent of the world's land surface but they hold about 30 percent of the world's soil carbon keeping it out of the atmosphere and helping our climate to avoid um you know, catastrophic climate change. So those are some that of the reasons is, why they're they're really important. That's an incredible catalog of, of, of benefits. <laughs> so what is what is the state of wetlands? I, I, we, we've you know, human population has exploded over the last few hundred years. In particular, um, we were at one billion people in 1800. We're now pushing eight billion. Uh, and as a product of that, uh, obviously, you know, we're wiping out a lot of wild areas. I'm assuming a lot of wetlands. How, how badly degraded are the wetlands in North America? And, and how unique is that relative to the rest of the world? And then, of course, the follow-up question will be, what, what do we do about this? <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately, wetlands both in the U.S. and around the world are on a continuing trajectory of loss and degradation. Um, the wetland laws that we have in the U.S. have definitely been effective in um, slowing the loss and degradation of wetlands fairly substantially. Um, unfortunately, over the past four years, the prior um, administration rolled back the wetlands protection regulations that have been in place um, for decades and, so had, and that have had bipartisan support and have replaced them with a, a new regulation that would remove protection from about half of the wetlands in the country. So right Whoa. now we're, yeah, so we're, things have gotten a lot worse. And thankfully, the Biden administration is on a path to, um, to go back to using science um, to decide how we should protect our clean, uh, protect our water supply and prevent floods and protect wetlands in the in the meantime. So they're they're going to be working hard to go back to um, the policies and regulations that had broad bipartisan support um, for decades. Right. Prior prior to, to Trump going on a on a fire sale, let's just you know, it, yeah. it's just <laughs> the damage that administration has done is just so so mind boggling. But but you know, let us not get political here. Um, so. Uh, CELDEF has been, you know, for years working with local communities, the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund, 
um, CELDF.org is their website, has, has for years has been working on um, uh, the rights of nature, essentially, or the rights of local communities to, to define the quality of their life, and part of that being recognizing the rights of nature. Tell me about the rights of wetlands. Sure. Yeah, so I uh, collaborate. I'm one of several co-authors on this, uh, on a peer-reviewed paper that m made the case for uh, granting rights to wetlands as as legal entities. And um, this group of, of co-authors includes um, a former Deputy Secretary General of the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, which is the big international convention that 171 um, countries, including the U.S., are, are parties to. And another um, is a is a renowned climate scientist, and others are um, sci wetland scientists that have worked for years with the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands. So they are some of the top, um, and and then two attorneys as well who are top legal attorneys for wetlands and really understand what's going on with wetlands globally, and. Um, Basically, after working for decades and decades on this, they're looking at what has been accomplished. And although the protections that, that have been implemented thus far have, have helped, the trajectory hasn't changed. We're, we're still losing wetlands. The climate crisis is, um, as you know, it's, it's just getting worse and worse and accelerating faster than scientists thought it would. The biodiversity crisis um, is on a similar trajectory, and we we really don't have much time. We have the next decade to change our ways, and so um, we found out about the the rights of nature movement, and we see it as a way of fundamentally shifting the paradigm for how humans relate to wetlands as a particular element of nature, and. Um, it could shift the ethical and legal framework and the way that we um, interact with wetlands so that we are less harmful and so that there's a, more of a reciprocal relationship where it's not that human needs aren't recognized, but that the needs of the wetland to exist, to continue to exist, to be f um, protected from pollution and um, to participate in natural cycles as is its normal normal um, process to have those rights and to have those rights respected and the right to regeneration and restoration as well. And um, the hope is that we could manage wetlands better with that approach. And we also um, have noticed that indigenous people have a lot of traditional knowledge in, in recognizing the living beingness of nature and the importance of a, of a reciprocal relationship and, and respect for nature. And um, sci recent scientific research is coming more and more, as particularly in the field of ecology, more and more in alignment with, with traditional indigenous knowledges. And we think that science and traditional knowledges should be um, taken into consideration in our decision-making processes. Remarkable. Well, I, I wish you the very best, uh, Jillian T. Davies. Thank you so much for dropping by today. It's great talking with you. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. My, my pleasure. Uh, Wetlandscert.org, Wetlands, Wetland Scientists, S-C-I-E-N-T-I-S, is, uh, is the Twitter handle. And uh, we're going to do a follow-up on this in about five minutes. Stick, uh, stick around. This is the Tom Hartman Program.